Welcome to Excel's new webinar. This is Joe Rule. I'm a partner with Excel Physical Therapy, and tonight we're joined by Dr. Nick Romanski. Dr. Romanski is here to talk, with, uh, talk to us about how to choose the proper running shoe uh, for when you decide to go out running and uh, become more active. Uh, Dr. Romanski is the founder of Healthmark Foot and Ankle Associates. Dr. Uh, Romanski is a contributing editor to Podiatry, Pod Podiatry Today magazine and lectures nationwide. He is a team podiatrist for U.S. World Cup and national men's and women's soccer teams. Here's the, the interesting thing about Dr. Romanski. He's a design consultant to multiple shoe and gear companies and a medical consultant to many of the Philadelphia professional teams. Uh, in addition, he's also with the Professional Futsal League. So, Dr. Romanski, thank you for joining us here tonight and talk about uh, running shoes. Yeah, great to have, have me. A uh, couple basic things about running shoe. The key thing is this. Number one is have a mesh toe box. So the front of the shoe should be mesh. So it allows your toes to move a little bit uh, rather than something that's enclosed and more en encapsulated. Number two is to have a, a removable insole. So if you get an orthotic, you need a brace from an ankle sprain or whatever, you have some room to work with inside the shoe. Secondly, or thirdly, um, you have to look at the collar of the, um, of the back of the shoe. That's where your ankle bones would meet the top of the, sh of the sneaker. A lot of times this is a problem, either too thick, too hard, not, a much, not as much as it should be, uh, or, or again, too much, because that would really bother a lot of women's ankles and their, their, their tip of their funny bone on the outside and inside. So some, that collar is that upper part of the, of the back of the shoe. Next thing is, uh, and lastly, um, is the height and firmness of the back of the shoe. So when you squeeze the side or when you uh, feel the side, you cannot crush it from side to side or from top to bottom. Uh, the next thing is uh, really the most important thing nowadays of anything I talk about tonight is don't go by size, please go by fit. So because sneakers are made in all parts of the world, whether it be Vietnam, different parts of China, uh, India, Indonesia now, the sizing and the quality control is very variable. So you must go by size. So you may wear an eight and a half in a particular company and all of a sudden you wear a nine in another company. So size is, size, uh, is not as critical as the fit. An old um, uh, uh, practice, so to speak, is that you have one, as you stand up, your thumbnail should be at least one length past the tip of your toe when you're standing. So the tip of the toe, you have one thumbnail, goes to the tip of the shoe. Uh, again, really, it's really about the fit. And again, sizing is off. Uh, it could be even with the same brand or the same style of that brand. You may get a, di a different shoe because it comes out at a, a different time in the factory or a different shift. Um, the next thing is also that you always want a differential. You kind of want the heel, the actual heel or the sole or the tread to be higher than the front of the shoe. So it shouldn't be too platform-like. Um, or some people use the word zero drop or a drop, but it actually should have a little heel to it uh, or a little higher in the back and shorter in the front to uh, help uh, assist in uh, ankle motion, knee and back um, uh, motion. Um, so those are really the clinical things about picking a shoe. Uh, next thing is you have a particular shoe company you like, regardless of what you read in Runner's World magazine, what you see on TV, what your friend is using you run with, go by what you've had in the past, what's worked for you. So if you like Brooks, you like Nike, you like Asics, typically it's, if there isn't really been a big change in the design of that shoe, then stay with that same company. So the, what we call the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid method, okay? So really stay with that shoe. Um, and a little tidbit with the shoelaces now, when you're picking a shoe, is that a lot of the laces now are very flat or very round. And typically they're also very synthetic. So even if mother and father told you to tie them and tie them correctly with a double or triple knot, really they will still get loose because of the synthetic nature of them. So every once in a while on a run, a workout, uh, a walk, you need to stop and retie your laces because then you're gonna get motion and motion causes pain, motion causes deformity. So those are just little tidbits about not pick, you know, 
picking a certain company, but if you like a company, try not to switch. The next and, and really final last thing is when you buy a new shoe, really try it around the house for a week or two. See how it feels. It may feel great in the store, but when you bring it home, it just doesn't feel right. Whether it's the pressure of a salesperson or you, it just doesn't feel right, don't get caught holding a, a lot of money, $100, $120, $200 for a pair of shoes when you know they're just going to end up in the closet and you're, you're upset about not fitting right or feeling right. So please use them at home first. And if so, most companies that either have a, some type of policy of bringing them back or replacing or store credit. So that's another uh, final point when picking a particular running shoe. That's some really great information that you shared there. And so it doesn't matter the make or the model, but as far as that goes, those are something that you can use in any kind of running shoe that you want to get. Now, Correct. if you go to a store, you have the um, option for a comfort shoe, a motion control shoe, or a stability shoe. I mean, what's the, what's the difference between those types of shoes? Right. So you can really get caught up in um, a lot of the surveys, a lot of the magazines, a lot of the reviews that come out numerous types, numerous times a year. So I, I don't really get hung up on um, personally that you need a stability shoe, you need a neutral shoe, you need an anti-pronation shoe. Unless you really have one um, abnormality that's excessively hypermobile with your foot type, I just tell people, Go what works for you. For instance, I wear a particular running shoe. I'm 155 pounds, but I actually use a running shoe that's actually used. It's light, and it's, it's, it's a comfortable shoe for me, but I'm using a shoe that really is actually for someone for over 200 pounds. Now, that works for me. It helps my knees. It helps my back. My feet feel very good in it. I don't need that shoe. So there's the difference between the art and the science. Okay, there's the art and the science of picking a shoe. So just because... The magazine, the review says you need this because you're this type of runner, you're this foot type. Don't go by that. There's, that's where the art comes in, what works best for you. So please look at both of those as the art and the science and not just what you see. Go by how it feels. And again, it doesn't have to go by this is only for someone who's 200 pounds, but this one's only for someone anti-pronation. Pick what works best for you and stay with it. Now, you may have to go through a few shoes, but... Don't let, you know, get, you know, roped into buying a particular shoe because that's your foot. And they've seen you walk on the treadmill and have you walk around the street. Don't go by that. Again, that's where that comes in two weeks at home wearing them. But again, there's the art and the science. So go by that and, you know, don't go by this, you know, all the names that are associated with it. Interesting. That's, that's great information. So um, would, if someone, we're not talking about orthotics here now, but if someone had an orthotic, would that... Would a, a good running shoe uh, take, away, take the need away from you needing the orthotic or uh, you, in your practice, the orthotic and shoe are kind of melded together and they're designed for one function to help a, help a runner? Right. So I think it comes down to a couple of things. Number one is when uh, choosing a shoe, you have to look at what are you going to be using it for? Are you running? Are you walking? Are you walk running? Are you doing some classes? Are you doing some... Zumba, you're doing some uh, yoga classes online uh, with shoes. Most of the time, it's not without shoes. So again, it depends on what activity you're using it for, what foot type you have, okay, uh, and also what your pathology is or what your problem is. So that comes into play. That is the, there's that science part mm -hmm. of why you're getting a shoe, okay? So someone, you know, most people ask me when I come in the office, or many people ask me, hey, doc, what's the best shoe for me? And I'll say there's really no good shoe for anyone. It's what shoe works best for you. Okay, so that's why I give them a range of shoes, um, a range of companies to see what's worked best for them. And then once they have that, then we can go with it. So when saying that in regard to an orthotic, okay, a custom orthotic, the main thing is, again, as it came up with initially, is make sure there is a removable insole and you also have enough depth in the heel so you, if you have to accommodate a custom orthotic or an over-the-counter insert, you can accommodate that because you don't want to have slippage in the heel and that. So you want to make sure you have enough depth in the heel that you can accommodate an insole. Got and it. then it comes down to really the interface of the shoe with the orthotic to make it work. Okay. It. So that's really the key thing is where it bends, 
what type the material, but really it's the interface with the shoe and the insert that make it work. Can you go without an uh, orthotic? Absolutely. If the shoe is that for you, you don't need to do it. If your pathology is not that excessive, then, then, um, then we'll just say, try the shoe first, the sneaker first, and then we can always go to a custom insert. Got it. Awesome. So um, how many miles do you tell your patients that you should wear your shoes before you change them? And is it different for a 250-pound runner and a 110-pound runner? Right. So very common question. So typically, typically with it, taking out all the other little parameters, it's typically 450 to 600 miles. Now, if you're running on blacktop versus sand, you're, uh, you're a heavy pounder uh, of, of, of a runner. If you're... Um, you know, running on the beach, you're doing hills, you're doing trails. So there's a lot of um, uh, parameters that go into how long that shoe will go uh, and how long it will last. So what I tell people is this, a couple of things. Either, you know, you can go to the store and the store will probably have you in their computer on when, you know, you um, uh, have purchased that shoe. Number two is I always tell people to literally take a Sharpie or a permanent marker and pick up the insole inside their sneaker, not on the tongue, but the insole, and put it, mark the date inside the shoe on the inside of the shoe, then you know how long you have it. Because there's so many times, oh, I just got that three months ago, and it's really eight months. So you either put it on your phone under notes, okay? You put it on your calendar, the store will have it. We're more likely just put it on the inside of your shoe that's permanent, not on the tongue, not on the heel, because it's just going to wash you off. Then you know when you put your shoes on every day, you pick it up, you can see how long you've had it. So it doesn't, it, it, I always tell people in general, 450 to 600 miles, six months to 10 months, but you kind of know it just doesn't feel right. What happens, they'll say, oh, well, I only use it three times a week to go to the gym. The other times I, I wear something else. So what happens in a shoe is the upper may look good, like the mesh toe box and the lace area may look great. The sole or the tread may look great, but really what fatigues out and bottoms out is a medical term, bottoming out, is actually the midsole. And that's the part between the tread and the upper of, of a running shoe. And that's really what fatigues out and bottoms out. So when you compress it, you'll see a little crinkle effect or you'll see some lines in there that, are, um, that shows that the midsole, which is the heart of the, sh of the shoe, has died, so to speak, or bottomed out. So you're not getting that same recoil, so to speak, to push off. So that's what I tell people. Look at the midsole, the part between this, the tread and the upper, that kind of tells us what's going on. But the general range, 450 to 600, six months to 10 months, depending on surface, your weight, and type of activity. Awesome. That's, that's some great information. Uh, one last question for you. So a patient, no, the, the runner doesn't come in and see you. Um, but they want to go to, to get new sneakers. Do you recommend that they go to, you see some of these running stores out, and it seems like they cater specifically to running runners versus like the big box stores where they just will have uh, people working there. Is, would it be better for people to go to some of these running stores versus the box stores? All right, so let, let's talk a little bit briefly about the industry, okay? So basically, um, you know, you can go online, you can go to different websites, you can go to different contact um, areas online, or you can go to a big box, or you can go to specialty running stores. So let's just step back a little bit and talk about this is not just about running, okay, because it's also about walking, okay? So people will come in and ask me, you know, Doc, what kind of shoe should I get? I just walk. And I said, get a running shoe. We don't really have walking shoes anymore. For the most part, we use running shoes to walk, okay? So even if you're walking fast or slow, with somebody, without somebody, trails or not, we usually use a running shoe for walking, okay? That said, you can go to multiple places. Now, most people wanna go to the, 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 you know, the Zappos of the world and you know, online and Amazon and, and that, and again, I'm not trying to pick on them, but it's just really, or if a convenience thing that now everybody's working from home, the stores aren't open, or they just don't have the time because of children and commitments around, so they'll just order stuff online. Again, that's where the sizing comes in. That's where 
uh, what it says and what you need are two different things. So I always tell people for the, and patients, for the first time you get a shoe, please go to um, a store in person and try uh, uh, a number of shoes on and brands on and see how you feel, okay? You can always go on after you get your first pair. You can always go online and get a second pair. Typically, could be cheaper or for other reasons, you know, you can go online. But the first pair, honestly, go to a, ideally, I like to, to help out the small vendor uh, because typically, the small vendor, the specialty running stores and the smaller stores, sports stores, are typically the stores that have um, uh, the number one style that comes out. They get the first um, shipment more than the big box, okay? So a lot of big box stores as well have their own custom shoes made only for their store. So even though it may say there's only certain styles and brands that will be in a Dix or a Foot Locker or some of the other big box places. But that will be different a lot of times than the specialty store. Now, is that starting to change and blend a little bit? Yes, but typically the smaller stores will get um, the first edition out, the first change out before the big box. Now, you may be lucky and get uh, a knowledgeable person at some of these big box places, but typically you don't. You'll get that at a more store, especially store or running store. So in, in closing, I like to say use the first time out, go to a specialty running store, whether for walking or running, get the right size, let them look at it, let them examine your foot. Most people are pretty knowledgeable around here. And then pick that shoe out, wear it around the house for one or two weeks and go from there. Second pair or third pair where you really should have a second or third pair and alternate whether it's the same or not, then you can go, if you have to, to some of the websites, cheaper um, um, alternatives online. But in the beginning, please go to a specialty place. And go follow the six recommendations that you mentioned first when you're going to uh, that specialty place that's in the area. Yes. So, well, thank you mu very much, uh, Dr. Romanski. Um, uh, just to, to let everybody know, Excel Physical Therapy has 32 clinics in Delaware Valley. Physical therapists are specialists in the treatment of musculoskeletal conditions to alleviate pain uh, and assist our patients to return to function. Together with physicians like Dr. Dr. Romanski, we help people return to things they love to do based on their indiv individual goals. Function is different for everyone. It could be running the Broad Street Run or walking down the driveway to get a newspaper. For more information about how physical therapy can, uh, uh, how a physical therapist at Excel Physical Therapy can help you, give us a call at 866-883-9235 or visit us at excelphysicaltherapy.com. For more information uh, on Dr. Romanski and his office and schedule, please call his office at 610-565-3668 or visit his website at uh, healthmark, healthmarkfootandankle.com. Uh, thanks again, Dr. Romanski, for joining us in today, tonight. And until our next webinar, be safe and keep moving. Thank you.